Hello, and welcome to Going Native number 49. As always, I'm Steve Carroll. I'm the dev manager for the C++ team. I've been looking forward to doing this episode for uh, quite a while, because today we're going to talk about all of the new things that we'll be announcing at the Build conference and that are available for you to try out today in uh, Visual Studio Update 2. All right, and welcome to Going Native number 49. I'm here with a, a huge crew of team members to show off uh, all of the many cool things that we have going for the Build Conference this year, but also in Update 2 of Dev 14, which as you are watching this will be available, but we're about a week ahead of time right here, just to orient you in time and space, uh, Redmond, Washington. Uh, we'll also have Dev 15 preview ready to go by the time that you're there watching this. OK, so I'm going to start with Andrew Pardo. Andrew, introduce yourself. What do you do on the team? Hi, I'm Andrew Pardo. I'm a uh, program manager on the VC++ uh, front end and static analysis team. OK, great. And you're here to talk to us about a big announcement with the build tools. Yes, we have been working on better acquisition of the C++ tools for a while. Back in update one, early in update one, we shipped the VC++ build tools. Uh, this is a separate SKU that allows you to install just the compilers, libraries, what you need to build from the command line without installing an IDE. Now, why would you want that? I mean, are you tired of the debugger? If you've got a build lab, you don't necessarily want an entire Visual Studio inst uh, installation on every single one of your build machines. So the build tools are a lighter weight, scriptable way to just get the tools onto your system. Now, We've gotten a lot of great feedback from customers. We shipped this, uh, like, like I said, in update one. We re revved it again early in update two. And we've gotten a bunch of great bugs from you, a lot of great feedback. The two big requests that we had were, when will you RTM? <laughs> I actually want to use this to ship my code. And can we have ATL and MFC? <laughs> and the answers are yes and yes. So. With update two, we'll be RTMing the build tools so you can use it for production code, and we'll be including ATL and MFC in the box. Now, that's not the only things that we've done to make acquisition of the tools easier. You might have seen that we have been publishing a, a NuGet feed of our tools, which this is still in preview. Uh, we don't have a timeline for when that's going to RTM, but that allows you to, to inside of Visual Studio, update to the latest tools that we've published, which Usually it's every month, month and a half, the latest tools that we've published that you can check and see if that bug has been fixed or that new feature that you've been watching. Yeah. So this is pretty exciting for us. I've been actually really pleasantly surprised with how much uptake we've gotten on both build tools it's and the new Git packages. Fantastic tens of thousands bugs. of downloads. Yeah, tens it's of thousands been amazing. of people. Uh, taking the time to fill out those bugs. And, and you know now you can use it for real, but please, by all means, keep those bugs coming, and we'll keep fixing them. Uh, you can check out our blog post that we're, we're going to be documenting all the many yeah. bug fixes that we got from you guys. So that was the last of our sort of Windows only thing. I think from here on out, all of our <laughs> announcements are you know sort of in the cross-platform vein. So in that uh, month, we've talked to Ankit before about uh, Android and iOS tools uh, for Visual Studio. Today, we've got yet more stuff in here. Ankit, tell us more about A, like where we can learn more, and B, what's new in Update 2. Right. I think uh, there's, there's a variety of uh, you know, stuff that we've done. So first of all, I think I would actually like to thank people for trying out our uh, cross alpha mobile story with Android uh, and iOS as well. So with this update, really, we're upping our game uh, <laughs> yet again. Um, and essentially, for the Android front, we've made a lot of improvements and new feature additions in terms of uh, you know, build systems and the experience, overall experience. The first highlight feature that we probably want to talk about is really the fact that the the in the Android front, uh, you know, Gradle has been the default build system for quite some while now. Uh -huh. And even though some of the C++ guys are new to Gradle and they're still on Ant, it's still something that they, you know, have to use these days if you're incorporating a Twitter library or a Facebook SDK into your Android application. So. You know, starting with this update, you can now install, uh, uh, you know, and use Gradle as a part of our experience to build your Android application. And not only that, you can, in, in addition to that, you know, also build Android libraries and artifacts like R files and JAR files, and then reference that in your Android application. So that's kind of like a first, uh, you know, big feature item on the Android front. The other ones there, the other big one there is basically the fact that, you know, if you're building large-scale applications on the Android mm -hmm. front, like a game, or even like you know, an enterprise app, uh, you know, on the Android tool set as well. I mean, you know, uh, you, your, your application might actually require a lot of resources and memory usage uh, from a tool perspective when they're actually building it. So sometimes you need a 64-bit uh, compiler and linker. 
uh, especially for games, this becomes really important because you're bringing these big monolithic uh, binaries. And that's something else that we're adding support for. So starting, uh, starting with this release again, you can out of the box install the 64-bit Android NDK as a part of installation experience and benefit from the same acquisition experience uh, you know, that you have for the other Android portions today. On the iOS front now, I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll switch gun here. Okay. We've basically you know, released a variety of features. Uh, first, we've really improved our edit build debug cycle there. Uh -huh. And you know, we've made a variety of fixes there in terms of, uh, in terms of including include paths or adding new files or making just our remote build story more robust. Uh, we, meant, we talked about the iOS experience last time as well. So the other new things that we're doing on that front is really that, I mean, most of the apps today build an Xcode um, you know, for iOS. And hence, uh, for the people who want to be able to build their iOS app from Windows, we're adding this functionality called import from Xcode, which allows us to import existing Xcode projects into Visual Studio. So make it much easier for people to actually bring their assets into Visual Studio. Exactly. I think from an entry point perspective, it's really hard for people to switch IDEs, you know, uh, different project systems, you know, the costs associated with it. Uh, so this is an experience that really helps them, uh, you know, move from Xcode to Visual Studio and really Windows for doing iOS development. Mm -hmm. And as they're doing this, you know, as a part of this uh, acquisition experience, which is importing from Xcode, we familiarize you know, these people with the concepts of frameworks uh, in iOS, which really runtime libraries, uh, you know, dynamic libraries, uh, you know, other Xcode uh, artifacts, so they can represent not they only- They have sort of native, native Visual Studio representations. Exactly, yeah. It's a native Visual Studio representations. And for existing Windows users to actually also benefit from the fact that you know, this is how they can actually go and learn a little bit more about it. So that's the first feature is really about importing an existing project in Xcode. And then the other feature work that I want to talk about the iOS front is really that we've, you know, with iOS 8, uh, iOS added support for dynamic frameworks and dynamic libraries. Uh -huh. We now support that as well. Okay. So that's something else that, you know, your app might not be using it today, but, you know, from a future perspective, you might actually want to reference a new framework. You can do that now in, uh, from the Visual Studio iOS experience as well. Awesome. So for Android, we've got, we're definitely f uh, fleshing out the experience, making it so it's much more complete. Mm -hmm. iOS, much easier to bring your code in. If people want to learn more about this, mm -hmm. like, do we have a drill down for that? Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, we have a drill down today. Um, I think uh, we're going to reference this from this talk. It's a yeah. pre-recorded talk, which goes into a demoing of your experiences here. At the build conference, and also a screencast that we have right now. Okay. Uh, at Build, uh, we'll be having a live talk on tips and tricks on why uh, some of the top reasons to use Visual Studio 2015. If you're a C++ developer, we're definitely going to double down on this one then. Great. All right, so that was the Android and iOS experience. Next, let's talk about IoT. Elizabeth, can you introduce yourself for the audience since you're new here? I am new. So I'm Elizabeth, and I'm an intern on the VC++ team under IoT. And so my internship project was helping out with Linux and Raspberry Pi for Visual Studio, which I'm really excited about because as someone who really likes um, to work in the maker space and someone who likes to um, play with Arduinos and Raspberry Pis, this is really exciting for me because I, I run Windows on my personal machine and being able to do that development from there is really cool. Cool. Do you want to give us a quick demo of, of how that works? I do. So we're going to see two things today. We're going to see our blinky LED demo for the Raspberry Pi. Um, so what we're seeing right now is actually my desktop or my computer in the office. Um, and I've got my Raspberry Pi wired up to a really simple circuit with just an LED in it. And I'm going to go under Tools Options and I'm going to add a new connection. And so it's going to pop a authentication dialog so I can point it exactly at the machine that I want to connect to. And what's really cool is that we can manage multiple connections. So if you have multiple Pis in a project, then you can select a different connection to use for each project. So you can go to manage those connections. You can go to Tools Options and add or remove new ones. Or you can go to your project properties, and you can select under Remote Settings uh, which one you want. And we can do password and private key authentication, which is nice. Um, so after that, I'm going to F5, and we're going to see the LED blink. Yay! Yay! Nice. And then we can also debug through it. So with the with the thing that we're shipping, these templates actually come with it. Yeah. Right? So these templates come with it. So if Get you're you just started. if you're just starting out, um, maybe you want you have a specific project that you really want to do. Um, this is a really nice introduction because when you mix um, maybe a new style of programming and 
uh, programming for hardware, then it can be really nice to have a foot in the door. So what I'm going to do is debug through this one. So I'm going to set a breakpoint here. And you can see us stepping through, which is super nice. That's right, real debuggers. None of that command line nonsense. None of that command line nonsense. <laughs> and hardware validation for your debugging. So yeah, I think this is really cool. So that's our Raspberry Pi demo. Okay. Um, and then we can also do full-scale Linux. All right, cool. Show us Linux. All right. So now you're going to get to see full-scale Linux. So we've got an OpenGL project on the Windows machine in Visual Studio. And we're going to go in and choose the machine that we're going to run it on. And that's all good. And F5. And let's, let's see this spinning cube. Woohoo! Spin cube spin. Spin cube spin. There we go. <laughs> and it's a rainbow spinning cube. And so let's throw a breakpoint in here somewhere. So this is, this is, this is OpenGL then, right? This is OpenGL. Um, so I think it's really exciting to be able to do this and be able to um, debug through something that's it's so applicable to game development, or it's so applicable for Linux users. And to be able to see that and be able to write programs and debug them in in Visual Studio is pretty, pretty cool. Awesome. So if people want to get this extension so that they can start playing with either Raspberry Pi hardware stuff or just plain old Linux, how do they get this? So this is going to be an extension in the Visual Studio gallery. OK, great. And we'll have links down at the bottom, I'm sure. All right, next up, Neil McIntosh. What I've brought along for show and tell today is a little sneak peek at the lifetimes checker that we announced back in CPPCon last year uh, in October. So that's part of a suite of static analysis tools that we're starting to release with Visual Studio. Uh, we started with update one when we released CPP core check, which enforces um, a small number of the CPP core coding guidelines that were announced again at CPPCon last year with Bjarne Strustrup and Herb Sutter and, and Gabby Dos Reis. Uh, so one of the things we demonstrated on stage at that time was a very early version of a checker to find lifetime problems in your C++ code. So that's things like dangling pointers and double deletes and null deregs and all the places where something blows up when it shouldn't. Um, so with update two, we're going to release an experimental version of that checker for people to play around with and give us feedback on, just like people have with the uh, first round of checks that we released with update now, one. Does this require update two, or is it? It does. So uh, we do. We have a hard dependency on the compiler's front end, and so this lifetimes checker does require you to be running update two to work. OK, cool. Do you need to get anything in addition to update two to make it work? You do, actually. You acquire these things via NuGet, so they're packages. You install them into one project at a time. So we've got this sort of incremental acquisition strategy for you. So it works exactly the same way it does for CPP Core Check today. So we'll release a blog post like we did for CPP Core Check, pointing you to the particular name of the package on NuGet.org. You add it to a project, run code analysis on your project, you got get it. some warnings, Bob's your uncle. All right, cool. And we'll update the links below with that information once we have it. OK, great. Neil, can you show us a little demo? I can. So I'm using not the full-blown Visual Studio for this demo. Um, I'm using this amazing thing called Visual Studio Code, a very lightweight editor we have um, that's really nice and nifty. So we'll a little bit of, in a minute. <laughs> yeah, more, more about that later. So we have this uh, simple sample here where we're doing something bad with a vector. So if you imagine Unspeakable. <laughs> yeah, something truly horrible with a vector. So I want you to imagine that you've written this code here. I'm going to write a little bit of it on screen now so you can believe that it's all real. And you're taking in a vector by reference as an argument. You check to make sure you've got more than enough space to index into it. And you take the address of one of the elements in the vector, which we see ourselves doing at line 10 here. You then go do something else in your, in your routine, and this is pretty common, and you push back into the vector. And even though there's probably plenty of room in the vector, and sometimes it doesn't reallocate, it's allowed to according to the standard. And sometimes it will reallocate and invalidate your pointer up here at line 10, which you then unfortunately go and use at line 17. So this is a class of lifetime mistake, referencing a dangling pointer, that's pretty hard to diagnose uh, via code review and manual review. It's 
relatively common in the wild and extremely frustrating. So <laughs> this is the sort of thing we're hoping uh, that people will find useful about the lifetimes checker. So I'm going to run that from the command line, which is my way of plugging the build tool SKU. So I'm giving everybody love today with my demo. <laughs> so I'm just going to run our little tool from the command line and we get a couple of warnings. One of them refers to the, the later code, but we can see that we get a, lot, a warning here for line 17, which if we flip back was where we're dereferencing the dangling pointer. And it says, do not dereference an invalid pointer, which is <laughs> a pretty good guideline overall. And it tells us that P was invalidated at line 14 by the call to pushback. So we're hoping there's enough information there for you to say, oh, line 14, oh, that pushback there. Ah, that would have invalidated P because it reallocated and you can go fix your code. Cool. So what should, what's the call to action on this? What do we want people to do? So just as people did with the update one version of CPP core check, please download this stuff from NuGet, pop it into your projects, try it out and give us feedback. We had thousands of people download the first packages, uh, give us really helpful feedback. There were performance problems and we had bugs and crashes and all sorts of things. And Not this, people, no, this is perfect. No, this is all obviously <laughs> like, like everything we do, this is bug free. Um, but no, it was great. It's great to get that feedback, to get the bugs, but also to hear about where people are trying to use it, what they do and don't find useful about it. So please give it a go, kick the tires, write to us and tell us you love it or hate it. Just tell us how you used it and why you did or didn't like it. All right, great. And we'll put contact links for that as well below. Yep. Awesome. All right, so we just took a look at Neil's thing with the lifetime checkers, but we're running in VS Code. Ankit, let's talk about VS Code. What super exciting things do we have to talk about with VS Code? Right. So surprising think, things, su might I say. Surprising, yeah, mysterious, I think. Uh, so, I mean, for those of you who don't know Visual Studio Code that Neil was just using, essentially, uh, it's a new product from a Visual Studio line of products. Uh, it's really tailored for your edit build debug cycle. And core was, inner loop stuff. Yeah, core inner loop stuff. And there was something seriously missing from this, you know. And I thought we will set that one right uh, with this build release. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, you know, we're adding C++ support to VS Code. Um, Before it would colorize and stuff. But. Yeah, it was just do some very basic colorization using the TextMate bundle. I think that what we're building now is going to be, uh, let's just say, far more superior. Uh, so we're going to be offering a code editing experience in it, starting with code navigation. So you'll be able to navigate to a symbol in the same file. Go to definition. Go to definition, peak definition. And this will kind of like just work out of the box uh, for you. And then we also have an experience there from a code editing experience where you can you know, give us more information, which helps you us improve your language service experience as well. And the second thing that we're doing there uh, is really about, you know, again, the editable debug cycle there. So it's the debug, de de the debug portion uh, for, your, for your development experience. So you'll be able to now also be able to attach or launch, uh, uh, you know, debugger for uh, against your application that you wanna you wanna go and diagnose or debug. You'll be able to send, uh, you know, set breakpoints, function breakpoints, conditional breakpoints. Uh, you'll be able to, you know, uh, inspect the variables, uh, you know, view the call stack, and so on. So it's really really something that we're really excited about releasing, uh, you know. And currently, you know, we're doing this for Linux first and then Mac. And then eventually, also the world. The world, <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, the the language service experience or the core editing experience works for all okay. uh, platforms right now. The debugger has um, you know like has some limitations, but you can catch more about that in the screencast that we'll be doing at Build, um, and you can follow us there. All right, and we'll again put the link to the to the, yeah. the drill down talk on this one, but. VS Code with C++ for Linux and Mac. Hooray! All right, last but not least, we've shown you a lot of good things coming in Update 2. We've shown you some out-of-band stuff, like the Visual Studio Code support for C++ and in Linux and Mac. But now we're going to show you a little, a little preview of, of Dev 15. Uh, and this is the new installers that we have, Lightweight VS. I will tell you on a personal level, the number one piece of feedback I ever get about Visual Studio is why do I have to install all of this stuff if all I want to do is C++ development? I could not be more excited to tell you that we are here to talk about that problem. Gabriel, over to you. Yes, so a lightweight, fast way to get just what you want from VS without having to install the other stuff. And so, um, so right now, I believe when this video goes out, there will be a link in the description. You can click on it. I'm going to run a quick demo of it. And the, the big thing to get from here is to realize that the size of just getting the basic C++ workflow is only about 1.1 gigabytes, which might sound large, to be fair. <laughs> but you compare this to how big 
you know, VS is like even in 2015 update two, like it's still pretty big. It takes a while. So it's like nine times smaller or something. Yeah, like something that. like that, and and probably at least nine times faster <laughs> to install as well. And so so what I'm going to do right here is uh, I'm just going to click install, and um, and so I'm I'm going to sort of fast forward through this. But you know, we've had reports. Depending on how fast your machine is, you can get this to install in under five minutes. <laughs> like that's probably mind-boggling. Most people who install VS, they they go to lunch, they come back, and then they can start working. Now this is like you can maybe take a coffee break, come back, and have VS working. And so in the demo here, as you can see, I'm going to project, and as you can see. All you see is C++. There's nothing else in here. To be fair, this is only for basic desktop development. So there are some workflows that aren't enabled yet. There is not MFC ATL. You can't do cross-platform currently. But in a way, it's a proof of concept. It's a preview. Yeah. But the proof of concept also shows you that you can do your, your edit, build, debug cycle. So right here, I'm going to create a console app. And then, yeah, I'm just going to set a breakpoint here, hit F5. And there you go. So yeah, that is the full basic development, uh, basic desktop development for C++ on a awesome. relatively tiny package. I'm off camera, but I am jumping for joy. <laughs> <laughs> jumping, jumping. Validate that I'm jumping, people. He's jumping. All right. He's jumping. jumping. Okay, so after pre we're going to be enabling um, all the other scenarios, including MSC, including ATL, all of those things, and you'll get only what you pay for in the spirit That's of great. C++. That's great. You can use your hard drive for storing even more you know, lovely, awesome things. Exactly. Even more awesome than VS. I don't know. Maybe it's not possible, but try your best. All right. Awesome. OK, great. So I hope you enjoyed that episode. Uh, we have a ton of things for you to try out, and we'd really love the feedback. So if you've got a build server, we'd really appreciate it if you grabbed the build tool SKU, slapped it on there, tried it out, and let us know how it was going. Um, would love you to grab the Linux and IoT extensions for Update 2. Uh, try that out with whatever your Raspberry Pi project is, or if you're doing Linux development in your daily job, we'd love to know how that's working for you and give us any feature requests. Um, we have every intention to continue down those paths. Um, if you're using the core guidelines, or even if you're not, take a look at the GSL, grab the new lifetime checkers, the updates on the CPP core checkers, um, and if you're doing development on Mac or on Linux, please grab Visual Studio Code and the C++ extension. Let us know how that's going so that we can make that better and better. Um, and finally, if you, if you have a little extra time, grab the Dev15 preview that was released and install that thing and get it going fast on your machine.